Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Vasudevan and uh, I head the quality services at uh, Aspire, the quality services delivery unit at Aspire. So uh, what we are uh, uh, here to discuss uh, today is about uh, uh, a test automation and a health check that we did for uh, one of our customers recently. So uh, test automation health check basically uh, helps uh, enterprises understand uh, the level of automation they can uh, probably uh, uh, do or uh, you know uh, rather uh, a health check on where they stand with respect to automation and how feasible their automation is which is one part of it and secondly if they are already into automation uh, this process helps them understand uh, whether they are uh, you know on the way to their goals that they have planned initially before they ventured into automation. So uh, this customer is uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, biggest customers and uh, he is one of the oldest uh, software companies in the US. Uh, they are about 40 years old uh, since uh, inception and uh, they have been into automation for about uh, 6 years now and uh, they use IBM's uh, rational set of tools for automation. And uh, one of the major challenges this particular customer had was uh, they were not able to achieve enough coverage through automation and also uh, they were not able to uh, you know, uh, 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 get away with the obstacles uh, that were posed during the process of automation such as you know, object identification and things like that. So one of the key challenges the customer came to us with was uh, how, to get, how, how do we get towards 100% automation. So they, they had challenges, their teams had challenges in terms of object identification. There were constant releases that were happening and those releases had object changes in the application and things like that. So the customer's biggest uh, uh, obstacle was to uh, move towards 100% automation considering the, considering the fact that uh, the team was on agile model and uh, there were constant bills that were given to the quality team for uh, validation and automation was one of the key areas that helped them to validate their bills and uh, you know uh, eventually scale up on the automation coverage. So uh, Aspire planned to do a health check on this particular customer on their automation processes. Uh, so one of our senior consultants visited uh, the automation, um, I mean visited the team uh, in their premises and uh, understood the different uh, you know uh, QA processes that were done on both manual as well as automation and uh, we also tried to talk to stakeholders to understand uh, what are the different things they have been facing as uh, challenges uh, you know during the entire course of automation that they were doing I mean, that they were doing for about uh, uh, the past 6 years so at the end of the conversation with the stakeholders and after talking to different people uh, looking at the templates looking at the automation scripts manual test cases everything we finally understood that there were a set of gaps that were creating this particular issue with respect to coverage uh, one of the major areas that we identified as a gap was uh, there was no uh, communication between the manual and automation testing teams. So as a result, uh, what was automated was not actually reflecting in the manual test cases and uh, eventually the automation scripts were not finding the type of defects they should be finding. And in some of the cases, the manual test cases were all uh, duplicated in the automation efforts and eventually both the manual and the automation teams were running the same set of test cases one in a mechanical fashion and the other in a manual fashion. So that was one of the areas that we identified during this health check process as a major gap. And secondly, we also found that uh, the controls that were used in the project were, uh, you know, uh, were posing a serious handicap to the automation, um, you know, uh, efforts. So they were using uh, infragistics, which was one of the third-party controls, and uh, you know, automating infragistics infra using IBM's tools was a big challenge for them. So we uh, basically identified that gap again, and we told them about the various options that are available in order to get away with that particular issue. And uh, eventually, we also, you know, uh, scripted a few parts and showed them how, you know, infrastructures can be automated. So that was again another uh, gap that we identified during the health check process. And also, we found that uh, there were there was many very minimal documentation available. I mean, new me members come on board for automation. They were not able to understand where the current system was, where it started, where they need to get started, and things like that. So every time a mentoring uh, session happened, a mentor was attached, and you know it was taking a lot of time for the new members to you know uh, quickly come and deliver. So those are some of the serious gaps that were identified during the health check process, and uh, you know. Um, those were uh, submitted as a gap analysis report to the management uh, of our customer and we told them that these are the three immediate areas that needs to be identified if they want to you know, meet their goals towards 100% uh, uh, automation coverage. Uh, 
um, subsequently, Asper was asked to uh, come on consulting for this particular assignment, and we had three of our uh, you know consultants uh, working on uh, with this customer in order to resolve their uh, automation woes. So. Uh, our team of consultants, they got started with uh, what we pointed in the gap analysis report, which is basically trying to uh, bridge the gap between manual and automation teams and making sure that you know manual team communicates to automation team on the key areas that needs to be automated. For example, uh, there was a customer support team or rather a product support team which was uh, tracking the defects that were filed uh, by this customer's customer which is like you know uh, the, the 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 customers who are using uh, you know their products were actually filing defects in the application and those were not getting tracked in manual test cases so the manual team started uh, tracking them and they gave inputs to the automation team about these defects so that those can be taken as priority for automation eventually when they were automated the coverage increased because end of the day customer defects started reducing because we were taking that uh, as a priority and uh, you know the manual and automation teams they started interacting uh, much before you know, much more than uh, they were doing before and uh, you know uh, duplication was completely reduced so whatever manual team was testing was more in terms of uh, uh, you know new features enhancements and things like that whereas the regression part was completely handled through automation and uh, secondly we also started looking at uh, third party controls in the systems what are the custom controls that are being used what could be a, a good way to get away with such controls as part of automation and things like that so uh, we basically started uh, identifying such controls and we started giving inputs basically uh, you know in terms of how this control can be handled or uh, how we can go about uh, you know uh, automating that and things like that so during this process it was important for us to bring the development team into the picture because they are the ones who are working with these controls or they are the ones who are implementing these controls so we spoke to them we told them uh, that you know it would be good to have early information about such controls to the testing team or to the QA team so that the QA team can be made aware of introducing such controls in the product and eventually they can plan for automation or development can expose certain methods or APAs with respect to those controls which can be which can be helpful for the QA team uh, during the process of automation. So the idea was to get all the stakeholders together and ensure that they are communicating with each other and eventually resolve things and you know uh, make sure that they are all on the same page and help each other in terms of their efforts. So that was again uh, you know uh, something which our consultants came on board and help, uh, help this particular customer. And finally, we started creating documentation uh, for the various areas that were automated. So any major script that was created, we had a very clear information about what that particular script is, what it does, when it is being called, where it is available and all that. Because assuming, I mean, consider about 40,000 lines of code in automation, it becomes imperative for us to have a documentation, uh, you know, not to cover all the 40,000 lines, but definitely uh, the key areas of the code, because, uh, you know, it becomes uh, very important when new members come into the system. So we started documenting such things and we shared them in a common repository where people can look at them and understand what's going on through the entire automation process. And uh, as part of documentation, again, uh, we were also uh, trying to introduce coding standards with respect to the scripting language that was being used. In this case, being uh, you know a VB.NET, a Visual Basic .NET. So we tried to introduce some good coding practices. We tried to help the customers team understand the need for check-in, check-out, the need for good commands and things like that. So these are generally processes that are covered in development, but. At Aspire, every automation project is considered as a development project and it becomes important for us to add value to our customers in every possible way. So eventually we said that you know we wanted to have good coding practices for uh, any automation project and here in this case we brought some of the best coding practices that can be done for VB.NET and help the customer you know uh, build on that. So such things definitely you know help the, uh, the customer uh, increase his coverage and eventually increase the quality bar of this product. So this is one of the areas where uh, you know test automation health check has been a, a key uh, beneficial uh, factor uh, for automation. So doing a health doing a health check uh, for your automation efforts is the key towards uh, you know the long term goals of automation.